I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're gonna dye a sock blank. Specifically, a Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Sock Blank. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid, and the blanks themselves are knit with two strands of yarn to held together, so that way whatever we create on them, it can be unraveled into two matched skeins of yarn, 50 gram skeins of yarn. Now, the technique I wanna do today is revisiting the Sock Blank Donut. <laughs> This is, I suppose, almost like a tie-dye shibori kind of technique where I'm gonna attach the sides of the blank together and then sort of cuff it and roll it as if it were some kind of sock uh, to create a really interesting pattern. But the first thing I need to do is sort of stitch the sides together. I'm using a ribbon to stitch this together. I'm not even tying it at the end and I'm literally just doing a very simple, loose back and forth, trying to uncurl uh, the blanks a little bit as I go. But ultimately the goal is just to very, very quickly secure and loosely secure these ends together. You'll see, it's nice and loose. And while I am quickly stitching this, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And I do want to add that if you make your own sock blanks on like a cheap crank uh, kids knitting machine, then you don't have to do this step. But we're starting with a commercial blank today and ultimately this is a faster prep than it would be to make my own circular tube blank. Okay, now we have a tube. We have like a sleeve basically <laughs> that I can stick my arm into. And I want to start winding this into our donut. And I'm gonna start on the inside with the shortest edge of ribbon so I do not uh, mess that up. And notice I'm starting with a fairly wide cuff. Uh, that is from experience. I think that it starts to get a lot harder to roll it the closer you get to the other side. And so we're just gonna start wide. Now each time we do this, Part of the yarn is ending up more on the interior, not just the interior of our tube, but in the interior of all this. And honestly, I could, I can make it smaller to start with. We can undo this. There's enough space in the blank. Okay, I don't need to start quite so big. Because what we want, you both want the donut to be loose, um, but also you don't want it to be too tight and have too much resist. Uh, but the thing that attaching the edges together versus doing one long tube, and maybe we'll do one long tube where I don't secure the blank together and we just sort of roll it. Uh, these two ends here are not going to be the most exposed area to our die. The most exposed area to our die is gonna be, now that we're at the end, trying to just shift it so that's nice and tucked in. The most exposed areas are gonna be both this edge that's poking out a little bit and all this yarn on the outside. And so we should get sort of a dark and light, almost repeating thing where the sizes change and it should be a lot of fun. And I can tighten that a little bit. But here is our sock blank donut. And this is how it looks at the other side. So you can see that dye can still get in the middle here. There'll be a little bit less, especially as we go through, like more dye can get to these outside areas than can get to some of that inside, but some will. And it should give us a really fun pattern. And as for this ribbon, I'm just going to sort of stick it in the middle. The ribbon shouldn't take up any dye at all. I'm not planning on pre-soaking this before we go and dye it. And that is because adding the dry donut <laughs> to my kettle will sort of force it to suck up liquid and it will bring some amount of color towards the inside. Uh, whereas if I had not done that, if I started wet, uh, then we would probably see more white on the inside. But if you want to see me do or attempt some kind of side-by-side -side with a pre-soaked donut and non-pre-soaked donut sometime, let me know down in the comments. In my dye pot, I have uh, 16 cups of water. 
And we're gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar to start with. This is 5% white vinegar. And as for our dye colors, we're going for one of my favorite combinations that I know breaks. And that is a combination of Dharma Acidite Emerald Green. And I'm gonna come in with about 20 milliliters of Emerald Green. It's possible we'll need a yarn mop here because I feel like I'm gonna use a lot of dye. And I'm bringing in 50 milliliters of Royal Purple. So yeah, this is a lot of dye. Um, but if it looks like after a reasonable period of time, we still have a lot of color in the water, I can bring over, as I mentioned, a yarn mop, a skein of yarn that we'll use to help soak up the color that is left in here. But the combination of the two tends to give us like a really, really pretty, almost bluish color. Uh, it's a bit unexpected, but lovely. Uh, and I've used this combination many, many, many times in the past. Uh, but royal purple does strike fast, emerald green strikes slow, so we should get a variation of hues in our yarn. And now let's go start heating this up. We don't need the dye bath to be boiling, but I do want it to be warm before I bring over our donut and place her in the dye bath. So we'll wait a little bit for the things to warm up. We are getting nice and warm. You can see movement on the surface. We're not quite out of boil, but now we're gonna add our yarn donut. And you can see that it is sinking in on its own. I'm not having to press it down, at least not yet. And so as it's sinking down, you can see water is coming up through the center, but notice that that is greener than the water around the edge. You can see that green in there. That's because the color is breaking and that color in that middle was had to be filtered a little bit through. So I think that this means we already know we're gonna get some good breaking. <gasps> that has me so excited. I mean, I knew we would get breaking doing this, but I don't know, just watching it, sink in on its own was super satisfying. Uh, but now I am moving it a little bit. Uh, we are floating, but I just want to add, I don't know, a little bit of, just a little bit of a push. And I guess we've got the heat, the heat on medium. And now I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes on medium to low heat. And I have a feeling we are still going to see color uh, in the dye bath after those 30 minutes. But at that point we can decide what we wanna do and how we wanna proceed, if we want a yarn mop or what. However, as a point of reference, we've got a lot of color right now. It is still very purple leaning. So we'll see how much that shifts uh, over time. But I'll see you in 30 minutes. It's five minutes into the timer and I'm not sure if I actually used royal purple or if I used midnight blue. Uh, but I can go back and review the footage because royal purple has a, a tag that goes along the length of the bottle. Uh, where as the midnight blue has a label that goes sort of like around the circumference. So I'm gonna the footage. I could not see the label, but I think I used midnight blue instead of royal purple. It doesn't matter, we still see breaking here, and we may have a new awesome color combination to play with. Oh dear. But anyway, I'm gonna let this timer go on, but uh, yeah, sometimes I make mistakes because if I have two dark purples, and grab fast without looking? Well, the only thing that really told me was that the, at the time, the top, the top of the Royal Purple bottle was very clean because it was clear, oh dear, it had not been shaken up recently. And so uh, when I went and was like pouring some out, then I realized like, oh, I grabbed the Midnight Blue by mistake. And yeah, I'm 90% sure that I used Midnight Blue in here instead. <laughs> it's been over 30 minutes and you can see just how steamy we are and we have a lot of color in our blank but you can see we've got a beautiful almost teal in there 
And our color is reduced, but we definitely have a lot of color um, in the dye bath still. Now we have two options at this juncture. We could just wait, or I can bring in a yarn mop. Ooh, to help soak up that leftover color, but look how blue that is. Ooh, that is super, super pretty. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a gorgeous leftover color. And I'm feeling like, because of how unpurple this is, I'm feeling like we definitely have, uh, <laughs> I definitely use Midnight Bloom. Um, but another thing I wanna do is add more acid. One, two more tablespoons on white vinegar. This yarn I just added, Swish DK, is 100% superwash uh, merino wool. Did something get stuck? Yes, there we go. And already, you can see by just that little bit of help, notice what's left? We've got green left. All that other color that we had is in, was very quickly soaked up by this yarn. And that amount of green left, whoops, is not very much. Let me make sure I did not, yep. Well, I overloaded and therefore blew out uh, my burner. So I'm gonna deal with that and we'll be right back. And by dealing with that, I just had to reignite it. It ignited no problem. But that's why if you ever spill liquid onto your cooktop, you should always, always double check. Now, I am curious if at this point, if I squeeze our donut, I'm looking to see if like a ton of color comes out, and I don't really see that. Now, I'm adding our yarn mop in all the way. We may see color transfer from the donut onto the mop, but we also might not. I'm not super worried. But I'm gonna add a nice glug of white vinegar. And I'm gonna heat this for an additional approximately 30 minutes, um, just so that way we can uh, fully set our yarn mop in here, but then also hopefully absorb a lot of color um, on our donut. But let me see if I can zoom you in. It's a little hard to see with the steam, but you can see how we've got some glazing, we've got some different colors in there. And so I think that we're also gonna see some really cool patterns from the way that this yarn was folded up. At least that's my hope. But again, I'll see you in 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up and I'm gonna turn off the heat. And I think you can hear Indy outside. Sorry about that. Now, one thing I am curious about is if some of this yarn that's touching the blank got more color. And I think it's hard to say if that happened. Um, but I didn't notice anything obvious, but oof, this yarn is so pretty. This mop is so, so pretty. And yeah, I would say definitely way less purple than what we would have had had we used uh, royal purple as was our intent. But we definitely have some breaking in here and I'm optimistic we'll see some in the interior as well. Now, things are warm and we're gonna need to let this cool. I'm setting this aside. Ooh, but peak, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like the way this is, you can see, oh, this is so cool, so, so cool. Okay, now we've got a bunch of liquid in here because it's hard to drain a blank, but before we wash it, we will be able to unravel this and take a closer look at the pattern. I just want it to cool a bit so that way I don't, um, I mean, it's not, it's too hot to handle right now, so I will set it aside. Before we wash our yarn, I'm gonna just go ahead and stick our yarn mop in a rinse bath, but we need to unravel our donut. So I'm gonna take this to the counter. But first, here's the donut. Oh, you can get a little peek inside. And you can see our ribbon was not dyed at all. There it is, we'll pull the ribbon out in a minute, but let's unravel it. If this were a yarn cake or something, I would, want to sort of rinse it while it was still, ooh. Okay, so we've got like medium, super dark, light. Oh, this is so cool. If this was a yarn cake or something, then I would want to rinse it and let it dry. Oh my gosh, before untwisting it. But, oh man, this is so cool. This looks awesome. So notice how 
this deep, dark section. It's thick, thinner, 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 super thin as we go down. And the nice thing about using this ribbon is that it should be really easy to remove it. And now, well, we may as well look at the wrong side first, but oh my gosh, this is so cool looking. Here, because was the wrong side on the outside, you can really see like the fractal almost nature because like these sections, these dark sections get smaller and smaller and smaller. Let me flip it over to the right side. Yeah, on this quote right side of the stockinette, you feel more of like almost the glaze in here. Oh, this is cool. So I see mostly almost a black, but like a navy. There's some hints of area that are more blue. And then we've got the greens. I love it. Let's go wash it. Oh man. Now we see these stripes that sort of go down the, the like length of it. Had I just rolled this up and gently secured it uh, in like a log form, we would see different patterns towards the edge versus in the center. And so this is gonna give sort of a gradient slash micro stripe feel to whatever is made out of it. And I think if you were to do some other kind of tie-dye, or I guess the more log, uh, then, then you would probably still see like a similar pattern towards the middle, but, and I'm just adding a little bit of some clear dish soap. But I think on the edges, you would have a lot more darkness. Whereas things are pretty consistent throughout because I just quickly um, stitched those ends together. But I am not anticipating that we're going to see any bleeding. And we're not. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm going to put all this yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll take a closer look at the magic when things are dry. The finished sock blank is so pretty in its almost fractal design. The reason why I'm kind of calling it fractal is just that the repeats are there, that just size of them changes as you go through. I think I feel more of the green on this side of the blank than I do on the other side. I am so glad I accidentally used midnight blue in here instead of deep purple. I think this combination of almost the navy and the greens and some teals is so, so stunning. Uh, and man, I'm curious what other kinds of color combinations we can come up with that will break uh, for doing this kind of donut in the future. Because I mean, you can imagine taking your donut and hand painting it or something, tie dyeing it and having something really, really fun there. I'm not going to unravel the blank in this video, but in these areas that are dark, when I pull it apart, you see how you see those light areas in between those stitches? It'll be modeled with a lot of reverse speckling, which is another thing that is super fun with these kinds of blanks. Now I said I'm not going to unravel this blank in my video. That's because I prefer to sell my sock blanks intact because then the customer can decide if they want me to unravel it for them or not. So if you want to buy this blank and want me to unravel it into the 250 gram balls of yarn for you, I'll make a short out of it so that way you can see what the yarn looks like. Uh, and then that will be up on the channel. So please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And of course, if someone um, asks me to unravel it before uh, this video comes up, then who knows, maybe there'll be a little clip coming up. Sometimes I have videos that are in progress that I haven't finished yet that are options for people to become last minute lab partners and you can sort of have a video sort of jump the queue and get edited and published a lot sooner. And so you can go and check there and see what kinds of videos I have in progress. Of course, there's tons more fun yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Links to everything are down in the description. I recommend you check it out. But of course, subscribe and turn on notifications and all of that YouTube -y jazz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching. I almost forgot about the yarn mop. She's beautiful and goes perfectly with the blank, even though it's a completely different fiber content. I really need to do more midnight blue and emerald green.